Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a Toshiba 17 inch laptop. Uh, it's actually one of my laptops I use for work. I bought it new about five and a half years ago, I believe. It's got a, I think, fourth generation Core i7 CPU in it. It's been a good, good computer for me. I just do a lot of my work stuff on it, but I've just never had time or gotten around to doing any upgrading on it. It's already got 16 gigabytes of, of memory, uh, but it has one terabyte hard drive, mechanical drive. I just want to go ahead and put a new two and a half inch SSD. I'm going to use the Crucial uh, MX500 series it's a one terabyte two and a half inch SATA SSD these are good little drives I use them a lot unfortunately this model my model here does not have an M2 slot this was before the days before M.2 was real prevalent so to speak so I'm going to give it a little speed boost here by cloning my existing hard drive onto here like I said this has a lot of data I got hundreds of gigabytes of data on here so I decided I'm going to use the Acronis True Image 2020 version that I purchased. It's like $39, I believe. I'll put a link down below where you can download it or purchase it. Um, it goes fairly fast on an operation like this. There is the Macrium Reflex 7 that I've used in some other videos. That does a good job. Um, but the Acronis does go a little quicker. And for me right now, speed is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook up my USB to two and a half inch SATA adapter here. I'll put a link down below where you can buy these are like 15 20 bucks So USB 3.0 this laptop doesn't have really any, any other choice like a C type, but this will work just fine I'm going to clone it then I'm going to shut the laptop down I'm going to open it up show you how to open it up put the new SSD in it fire back up and hopefully I'll have a really good clone So this just plugs into my USB 3.0 port right over here and Hopefully the clone goes good. I'll show you how to use the Acronis, the paid version. The uh, Western Digital Free Edition just doesn't work well with these USB adapters. Um, I, it just flat out doesn't work. So I decided to just buy it for this uh, demonstration here. So let's, um, I'm going to get the software, show you how to download it. I'm, I already got it installed and then I'll do a clone. So let's get started. All right, guys. I got my my USB drive or my USB adapter plugged into my USB port. So now, um, what I'm going to show you is the Acronis. What you're going to want to do first is open up your web browser. You're going to download the Acronis Free Edition, the Western Digital Free Edition. First, you can just type in WD Acronis. download choose the first one uh, it's right here I'm just going to click on it here and show you what to do um, what you're going to do is download and you're going to click right here which says true image Western Digital just click on that and then you're going to click on the download button and you're going to download it it'll say build 33 so I'm going to close that out because I've already downloaded it and it's right here so because we don't have a Western digital drive inside to do this, and like I said before, with the USB adapters, it's a little funny. So I just, I purchased it. It was like $39. You're going to double click the installer for the free edition. I'm trying to make this simple. Like I said, I already have it installed. <clears throat> but when you dub double click that installer, Gonna, you're going to hit yes on user account control and then right here is what you're going to click on this link right here because it says no western digital installate you know it's, it's a restricted installation because you don't have a WD drive inside so click on that link then it's going to take you to the page where you can download the upgrade so it's $39. You're going to click on the upgrade. You'll get a unique product key that you can use on your computer. Can't really, you can transfer them, but it's a pain. So just download it like I already did. I'm going to close this out. 
and I have it right down here on the bottom. I got a, I got a link here. I'm going to open up the one that I purchased for $39. And this is what it's going to look like once you pay the $39 for the upgrade. Again, the Macrium Reflex 7, I've had really good luck with that. The free edition it does work, but it, for a situation like mine, I'm going one terabyte to one terabyte. And I have a lot, a lot of data. Um, it's just going to take a while. The Cronus seems to go a little quicker in a case like this. So click on clone disk, like I just did. Then we just got to wait for these <clears throat> to read the drives and calculate everything. It takes a couple of minutes. Got to be patient. And I am going to disconnect from the internet while I'm doing a clone. I always just kind of like to do that. And if you don't, you don't really want to have any other programs running. Now I got my desktop recording software running. It shouldn't be a problem. But sometimes when it actually starts the clone process, it will it'll tell you that it has to do a restart to do the clone outside the Windows environment, which is fine. So now you, I'm going to choose automatic right here at the top. Click next. But sometimes it'll do it right in Windows. I keep a lot of my background apps running kind of to a minimum anyway on my computer. This is something I should have did a long time ago. I've just never had time, so I thought I'd do a video and show you how to do it. And like I said, this process can take a couple of minutes. Check out some of my other videos. I got some other videos on cloning using, for example, the Macrium Reflex 7. But I'm going to have links down below the video here where you can get this and how to do it. And the adapter that I'm using. There's lots of different types of adapters, but StarTech has some good stuff. I'm hoping it's just going to do it within my Windows environment and have to do a restart. But either way, it, it'll clone your drive. But you don't really want to be doing a lot of other stuff and keeping the computer busy while you're doing the clone. Just start it and kind of just walk away and let it go. And then when I'm all done with the clone, of course, I'm going to shut off the computer, open it up, open up the Toshiba laptop, show you how to get in there and install the new SSD and hopefully boot it up. Now, okay, so now... We're going to see here, okay, this is our unallocated one terabyte drive right here. Right below is our C drive currently. So I'm going to click on proceed. It's going to go through a few steps here. It's always a good idea to have your data backed up before you start doing stuff with cloning. Just back up your user account folders, your important data, documents, pictures, bookmarks, videos, music, that kind of stuff, just in case. So it looks like... Cloning, it's, just, it's preparing. All right, guys, you, you can see it says here preparing. It's calculating time remaining. I'm going to let this cloning process actually start. And then right towards the end, I'm going to come back so you can see kind of how it finishes up. But this will take a little bit of time. I just want to get it going here for you. But like I said a minute ago, the less things you got going on in the background, the better. So now you can see it's copying and merging partitions. Once the progress bar here gets going, I'll go on pause here and I'll be back towards the end.
Cloning times can vary depending on, of course, the size of the dish you're cloning from and to how much actual data or space is being used. This copies clones all the hidden partitions and everything. It'll be just a mere copy of what we had to start with on the old mechanical drive. Don't mean to bore you here, but there we go. We got our pro progress bar starting to move here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. I'm going to I'm going to step away for a minute. I'll be back when it's just about completed. All right, guys, I'm back. You can see the clone is just about done here, almost to the end. I thought I'd come back so you can see how it finishes up. Got to wait another minute. It says less than a minute. But everything went good. Um, elapsed time was about 40, probably about 47 minutes. Considering how much data I have on this, that's not too bad. Seems like that last minute always takes a long time, but it's almost there. And again, guys, if you want to do this by downloading the Macrium Reflex 7 free edition, I'll put a link to that down below. You're more than welcome to try that. I've had good luck with it. It just it, it will take a little longer in my opinion again it really depends on how much data you have on your on your computer All right, the disk was successfully cloned. Looks good. I'll hit OK. Going to exit out of the program. OK, so my next step is I'm going to shut down the computer. I'm going to install and take out the old hard drive, install the new SSD and give it a quick boot up and we should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. All right, guys, like I said, the cloning went, cloning went great. Done with our adapter here. I'm going to put the new SSD in here. Now, um, the exact model of this Toshiba satellite, by the way, is S70-BBT2N23. It's a 17.3 inch. Um, flip it over. First thing I'm going to do is take the battery out. Oop, unlock it. I think. Now, I didn't want to bore you with all the removing. There's a lot of screws, and all the screws are the same length. So you don't have to worry about what screw goes in what hole. But I am going to take out the last screw here, which holds in the optical drive over here. So let me get that out of the way. 
I'm using a number zero Phillips screwdriver with a good magnetic tip. I'm going to slide the optical drive out just like that. Comes right out, one piece. Then underneath that, there's another screw right here we have to remove. A little flathead screw right here. No ups, of course. Just a little guy. Get that out of the way. So all the other screws are removed. The bottom pan on these models comes right off. Like I said, this is my computer. I just never had the time to upgrade it until now, so I thought I'd show you how to do that. I'm going to get my little spudger tool in along the seam here, pretty much anywhere, just to get it started. Now, if I remember right along the back here, <clears throat> excuse me, along the back, in this area here, these little clips here can be kind of stubborn sometimes, so be careful. Let me get my little other little spudger tool here. get it started but these sometimes can be quite stubborn if you push down on them ah, this is going to happen get my screwdriver or my tool in here gets hung up on this battery connector here too you just got to kind of fudge it be patient, firm but gentle. Yeah, we're starting to get it broke loose right here. Let me get this front off again here. Never had my own laptop before. There it goes. All right. There's our bottom cover off, set that off to the side. Okay, inside here, as I said before, there's five years ago M.2 M PCI Express slots weren't, weren't really around per se on laptops anyway. Got two 8 gig 6 of DDR3, it's PC3L I believe, yes. And there's a hard drive we're gonna get out. So it looks like just basically a friction fit as you can see they got these little rubber feet here we have to just get it started here it's been in there for a while i got the battery out so we still want to be very very careful i hate these types of hard drive caddies i don't know if you can get in there and see that we have to try these little rubber feet out of here Little spacers, they call them. When we get the hard drive to come back, if there's any screws in there, we just have to. Good Lord. There's just a good tight friction fit. I kind of lifted it up gently, and I'm going to slide it back, just like that, to come out of the SATA connector here. And we're going to take our new drive, put that caddy if you will back on there the same way there's there's no screws on these there's, there's little fingers that go into the screw holes on the drive on this rubber boot so you have to get it out without mangling it too bad we're going to put it back on this drive basically the same way you can see these little tabs that are sticking out on the boot right here they go in the screw holes there's four of them two on each side Lined up first, Dale. Okay. Take a liar. There it is. Sorry. Been a long day. It's right at the end of the work day. <laughs> I have never had time to fix or upgrade my own computers. But it was, this has been a really good laptop. I want to keep it in use. It's just one of my work, one of my several work computers. You're going to get a couple more years out of it. We got the caddy mounted back on there. Gonna slide it back in. Pretty tight fit. Just don't put a lot of upward pressure on it this way. You want to break this area here, obviously. I'm just gonna tuck these back down in there. There, installed. There's the old hard drive. So everything still looks good. Gonna put 
I bottom cover back on. I'm not going to put all the screws back in until after I fire up, make sure everything's okay. Don't want to have to take out all the 16 or 18 screws I took out. Just going to carefully snap it back in place. <clears throat> Always be careful when you're squeezing these, you don't squeeze too hard on the lid side because there is a screen. If you squeeze too hard, you could actually damage your LED screen. Don't want to do that. Put my battery back in. There's no screws under here. Lock it back in place. Alright, I'm gonna Yeah, I don't need my power cord, I guess. It's, well actually before I do that, I'm sorry guys, I am gonna put the optical drive back in. I'm going to put this one screw back in right here. Just like that. So this only goes in one way. That back in. I just want that to be in there so it'll get detected along with the new SSD. There. All right. Okay, let's hit the power button right here. Sorry about the shiny reflective screen, guys, but <clears throat> sometimes it'll do a disc checking the first time, but I don't think it's going to, so that booted up quite a bit quicker. It was a pretty fast computer before with the mechanical drive in it, but these is no comparison to a solid state drive. So it looks like our clone went good. I'm still running the 1909 edition on here. I haven't had time to get 2004 on here yet, but like I said, this is just one of my work computers. A lot of whole mixture of stuff on it. I do a lot of my screen recording with this one as well. So there, we got a good clone. Let's go into this PC real quick. Let's check it out. There it is. And there's my new solid state drive. You can see if I go to properties here, got quite a bit of data on one terabyte. Uh, eh, not too bad, about 260 gigabytes of used space. Not too bad, so there. Uh, Cronus 2020, Cronus True ME 2020 edition worked really well. Download the free one from Western Digital first and install it, and then click on the link like I showed you at the beginning if you want to purchase it. I know it's only a one time use, but you may find other things you can do with it. So, check out more of my videos. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate y'all watching and have a great day.